So I love these uh, January uh, data summits day day. here. Yeah, yeah, Day to Day Texas. I've been telling people I'm speaking at Day to Day Texas, and you actually can't tell in English if that's Day to Day Texas day to day or Texas Data or... Day yes, Texas. Yes, exactly. In writing, it's clear. Spoken, nobody knows. From Datastack, this is the Distributed Data Show. But all these uh, conferences start to run together too, like distributed um, data, um, days. Right, right, yeah. Data. Stream con. There needs to be a stream con. It all kind of runs together. But yeah. you actually, you are talking with Patrick today. I am. About uh, Kafka. Uh -huh. Kafka standard, which actually it's not, your t-shirt does not have the talk outline on it. It does not. It's as I hope it might. wheel Kafka like the three primary enabling innovations in, in behind human industry. Uh, I should, there should be Cassandra on there, fair point, fair point, or DSC or something. Yeah, well, I, was, I was making a pitch for Java, but I, you that weren't buying. It's a big deal, it's a yeah. big deal. It's okay. more implied by fire. Right. Yeah. So I've been trying to get you on for you know a long time. Uh, thank you for uh, returning the favor. I came on your DevRel podcast. Devrel Devrel Radio, yes. Yeah, last year, yes. and so you owed me. I did. Essentially. Yeah, yeah. And now, and now we're paying back a debt. I should, I, I'll get you on streaming audio too. That's the Confluent podcast. But, but anyway. Okay, well, we can, we can do this. There's possibilities. Absolutely. So, but actually, what the, the subject at hand here, uh, we're in the middle of a series on application development. Yes. So, we get a lot of questions from developers. Um, how do you use this technology? Like, it's great to play around with, but okay, let's get real. I'm going to use this to build my real, actual application. Yeah, so I have to write a computer program. And it's funny because you come out of events like this and people kind of pull you aside. Yeah. Like, I have a problem. Right. right. So these things tend to happen, right? So uh, you, uh, you like have a big history, obviously, with Cassandra in, in, in your past, but you're working with Kafka these days, mm -hmm. Confluent. So what are, what are some of those questions? Can you share a little bit? Like, what are some of the questions that people ask you about yeah. Kafka and App dev with Kafka. Yeah, so that gets into, um, there's sort of two levels, right? You can build things with Kafka with the, the primitive producer consumer API. Yep. You know, I want to put things in and I want to get things out. And people who are uh, building systems at that level usually have very specific questions like, um, you know, hey, I'm trying to tune my producing throughput and there's this setting yeah. and this, this uh, buffer pool. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> right. there is. Uh, and I mean, that's, I'm not one who has that stuff, that kind of stuff on the top of my head. But okay. if you're coding at that level, building an app at that level, you're thinking very specific, very low level things. And those are usually the questions. Right. Um, and also I'll say, you are probably uh, operating at the wrong level of abstraction for most things. It's not like it's wrong to use those APIs, but for most application development, you probably want to go up the stack a little bit and not think so much about a message goes in and a message comes out but you want to think about stream processing and higher level APIs like Kafka Streams or KSQL or things like that where you're dealing with oh, yeah, yeah. streams okay. as abstractions. Okay. And then the questions become things like, okay, I've kind of uh, gotten on board the Kafka train and I'm thinking of this asynchronous reactive world of microservices and a microservice gets an input and produces a message to a topic and other microservices consume messages from that topic and like right. everybody gets that. But the questions there tend to come along the lines of, fine, async is great, and I'm, I'm on board, but there's still this synchronous world out there where right. people ask questions and expect answers, and how do I bridge I'm that waiting. gap? Yeah, like where there's this impedance mismatch. Right. So apart from specific details of API questions, um, the I think the, the biggest one, people who are, you know, quote unquote, doing it right, yeah. are thinking about how to bridge the async and sync worlds. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, so like, I haven't graduated to that next level yet of kind of bumping up to that next level of abstraction working with the streams. I'm at the, I've been actually integrating Kafka into the Killer Video reference app Excellent. lately. Love, so love me some Killer Video. How far I've made it is uh, it. publishing uh, events when things happen, like a video is added to the system or something. So like one fun uh, thing that I had, or my first error, my first fail with Kafka uh, is I you start publishing. You always remember the first mistake you make with Kafka. So I'm publishing, and I'm looking in the log, and I see that I'm getting corrupted message exceptions. 
corrupted message. Okay. And what I figured out was that... Uh, um, I thought you were going to ask me why. I was going to say, like, this is exactly the kind of Oh, do you know question. this one? No, I don't. No, no, tell me. No, this is like the, the, the conference question I hate because like, I don't know. You Google that. I don't. Tell so, me. I would like for you to tell me my problem I and its interpretation. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. From just <laughs> the name of the exception. But what, what was it? Okay, so what it turned out to be is that um, I had borrowed some code that Cedric, another advocate, my advocate in France, uh, had sent to me about, hey, I've already started playing around with this. Here's the, uh, there's a, a very nice little Docker container mm -hmm. that was set up. Very nice parameters. When you crank up the Docker container, you can tell it to create topics just in the syntax of what you send in. Mm -hmm. So we were creating it, uh, we created the topic as a uh, key value style, hmm. and I was sending just a blob of uh, just a value object, and it was like, I don't know what to do with this because huh. there's no key. Oh, okay. Corrupt object exception. Corrupt. Wow. Okay. You should add that to the FAQ. There you go. Yes. That's, that's added to the, the larger FAQ known as Google. Yeah. Well, I mean, come on. <laughs> Cutting and pasting from Stack Overflow. That's what we do. Um, so, what are the, what, so we talked about some of the things that you uh, encounter that comes from the questions. Do you, is, are there some best practices that you find yourself giving again and again? Like, this is just the recipe of how to do things right. Yeah, yeah. And that is... Um, that second case I referred to, the person who's on board with the reactive microservices on top of Kafka world, yeah. um, that's kind of the architectural worldview that we put forth. Um, okay. So that's, yeah, yeah. that's uh, kind of given microservices, and that's a big given, because yeah. sometimes that's the wrong thing to do. But if that's what you're doing, um, then having those communicate through durable logs of immutable events right. is the right thing to do. Which, uh, so that, that as a basic pattern is a thing I advocate a lot. Right. Then you get in those services, uh, you have to start to think like, okay, how am I accessing data really? You know, because a yeah. service can consume validated orders or, or shipped orders or, you know, whatever. However, yeah. we're just making up things. These would be events that a service could consume and that service could do whatever kind of computation it needs and produce other events and blah, blah, blah. But often those services have to expose APIs to the world, right? Yeah, yeah. Like there's some web page that needs to do search or needs product recommendations. Or... Okay, so like a RESTful API? Yeah, or... so, so what if that service has that kind of whatever. API? Yeah. Um, where you have to go, so, you but know. It's also consuming streams. It's consuming streams. That's okay. what the service does. Yeah. Consumes messages, does its computation, produces new streams. And so all of these, these services are living yeah. on top of topics. But they have to they have to expose APIs too. Yeah. And those APIs often require lookups of things. And logs are famously unpleasant to query. I gotcha. Okay. So you end okay. up putting basically like databases into those services. Yep. That's which is where the synergy, and Patrick and I are gonna be talking about this. Uh -huh. As I see the synergy, um, you you need to do interesting things like full text search, graph analysis, key lookups at yeah, scale. Yeah, yeah. And that's where you want to put a Cassandra into a service. And often people think of Cassandra as 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 bigger than a service, and that's that's totally cool. But yeah, yeah. when you're exposing an API that requires that kind of analysis, Kafka does not do it, right? There, there right. just there isn't any right. of that sophisticated right. stuff like you see in DSC, like like search and graph and things. Right. So you need the combination of the two. Okay. If those are things you're trying okay. to do. Okay. So this is you've actually anticipated the next question that I kind of wanted to dive into, which is fine, by the way. So. It's fine, though I, there's obviously some different patterns of how you see Kafka and Cassandra being used together. Yeah, yeah. And so that's one in yep. a microservice where we're kind of, is that, would you call that a join? Or like you're pulling data from a stream and querying into Cassandra and then producing a result? So the way I look at it is you've got this. That's one pattern. This stream of events. Yeah. And this will, this will kind of be, this is my, it's my, my horse. So it's the, the pattern I've got. Yeah. Um, Service. And you're going to ride it. I'm going to ride this guy. <laughs> Service consuming events from a stream. Okay. Doing computation, producing new events. Okay. Uh, and that service, you know, produces events, doesn't care who reads them. Other services are going to grow up around that, whatever, you know, just let yeah, yeah. people consume that. But for that service to expose, and, and, and many services aren't just stream in, stream out, right? They're stream in, stream out, and API. Yes. And so in that case... Um, you know, you need things like Cassandra in there to do that. Right. So that's okay. that's a that's a okay. pattern. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Other, I guess one other pattern. Yeah. If you take a Cassandra-centric view, right? Yeah. Like, it's the system of record, and services are querying tables and creating events and tables or rows and tables. Right. Uh, and integrating through Cassandra, then a pattern would be uh, 
ingest into Cassandra, so kind of Kafka as pipe. That's right. Yeah. yeah so that that was one of the one of the ones that came to mind first. You went right for the, probably the most interesting and maybe the most complex one first. Yes. But I've also heard kind of these arguments about okay, um, I just want to and maybe they're more simplistic. There's definitely a use case for them, but I want to put Kafka in front of Cassandra. Like yes. I'm, I'm ingesting. I have lots of stuff streaming in through Kafka, and then I would just want to I want a persistent data store behind it. I'm going to throw right. it into Cassandra. And like multi DC is important. Cassandra is amazing at that. So right. Cassandra is kind of the center of life in the system. And so Kafka as pipe into Cassandra is totally, totally legit. Okay, but what about the other way? Uh, Cassandra into Kafka. Yes. Yeah. So do you hear, I, I wonder how this, no. often this comes up in practice, the like, I want to use Kafka as uh, change data capture or something like that. We're like, with Cassandra. So like, do I, people do this? It's doable, 100% yeah. doable. So, I mean, you can use Kafka for change data capture on any database, okay. you okay. might have to write the connector, you know? Okay, well, sure. the, the usual suspects exist, right? Uh, and I'm referring to, to Kafka Connect as the basic platform yeah, for- Yeah, the ecosystem of- Connectors and all, stuff. All yeah, various yeah. connectors that are provided, um, yeah. So yeah, you could 100% do that. You might have to write something, but uh, okay. that's very doable. So that would again be like, I have this Cassandra-centric system, and I've got this reason to have data in Kafka as a system of record, and integrating those systems is CDC from Cassandra into Kafka. Uh -huh. So that would be Kafka Kafka after Cassandra. Right. So there's Kafka before Cassandra, Kafka, Kafka after Cassandra, and then Cassandra powering interesting queries on top of the, the reactive microservice yes. thing. Yeah. Okay, I like those patterns. Yeah. That all seems doable. Yeah. I wonder how much of this I can build in my own application. The possibilities are... In killer video? In kind of, yeah, they're kind oh, of yeah. endless. You should do them all. <laughs> Given infinite time, I think I will. Yeah, that's the fun the fun part, right? Awesome. Beats uh beats blue jeans calls and email, you know, you're the right code. That's right. Actually, yeah. yeah, so yeah, when do you code? Like if you I know that you're on the road a lot, you travel a lot. Right. That's do you, a terribly embarrassing question. So these days not a whole lot. I'm yeah, on, I'm on the I'm on the road as much as I can be. Uh you know, running the, the DevRel team at at Confluent. That doesn't leave a lot of time. There's a lot yeah. of meetings in there, and no, I hear you. when I get to get out, I get out. I was hoping to get a little bit of a strategy from you for that. Yeah. I actually, I uh, we, we were traveling most of the last fall and really didn't do hardly any coding. And then I was I had a solid month where I didn't travel at all. December, mid December to mid January. Yeah, I wrote more code in that month than I had in That's probably great. like so the last five years. Not doing anything combined. in any other hobbies yes. would be key, and yeah. just making that your hobby, then you can do it. Okay. So don't have any other hobbies or any other That's things right. in life that you contribute to, and you probably be able to code a lot. Yeah, yeah, probably, and probably if I had any uh, other side podcasts or whatever, or flying <laughs> drones around, then I probably wouldn't have been able to code. There is. That that's time, my but, that's my problem. But you know what? More power to you, bro. Thanks, man. All right. Thanks for coming on. You bet. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye.